Welcome back to Let's Play The Evil Within with me, Jerupidus. And we did just get killed by Ruvik, which will definitely be a thing that happens. So why don't we get right back to where we were just before that happened. All right, so we just grabbed the safe dial. We've got all the stuff again, so let's keep going. And hopefully we won't get killed any more times, but you just never know. And I think I've done an adequate job of explaining my problem with it, and I mean... While I'm not ever glad to die, uh, I am glad that I got to show that it's just kind of BS and you just die for no real reason. So now that I've got those two safe dials, why don't we go ahead and save again, and I'll see you right back here. All right, so now that we have both of our safe dials, we may as well go put those on. And let's see what we get. So the top one is 11. And the bottom one is to just like the paintings. <laughs> and I just love this. Look at this. Oh, man. Again. And here we have yet another brain puzzle, so let's get to it. Assumption number 14, test 88C, limbic priming, temp 3, electrode placement C4, stimulation of the cingulate cortex, a hope center. Access improves domination of the subject's will, but domination isn't enough. So for this one, we need to do the Hope Center, which is going to be kind of top left. But they, of course, put it on an angle, so it's kind of hard to see. So one thing that I like to check is where it is in relation to the other pins. Um, yeah, so it looks like it's kind of straight above the lower one. I mean, that looks like it's right on it to me, honestly, but let's try right here. Here we go. Okay, and that worked. Now, mercifully, we get another checkpoint there. Because we will probably get a Ruvik spawn on our way back. The hospital has not received the family's usual donation this year. And why would they? Has the hospital been doing anything worthy of donation? The Victoriano family has always been a generous contributor. Where are your parents? They have gone away. When do you expect them? Is there something you wish to discuss, Doctor? I came to inform you that the hospital will no longer be able to provide you with assistance. Materials. Your research will very quickly disintegrate. How dare you come into my home and threaten me? And so they've had a falling out because I think that Dr. Jimenez didn't really realize the full extent of Ruvik's total insanity. Oh, God. All right, can we get away with it this time? Could he just not get me? This is just so dumb. 
I don't want to do all that stuff over. Please don't kill me. It's got to be almost over now. Okay. Well, we succeeded twice and we failed twice, so 50% is uh, definitely a failing grade. Just one more to go. All right, one more. Let's go do it. And is it this way? I'm kind of forgetting where the last one is. It's not upstairs. Ah, right, right, right. Here we go. Ugh, now we have to deal with another instant death thing here, and that's gonna be this trap coming up, and it is just the worst. But with any luck, we'll succeed, and if not, we'll die instantaneously, like everything in this game, and sometimes you're just like, why have a life bar? Like, why do I even have a life bar? What's the point? I just die instantly to any any mistake that I make. Anyway, Rubik's room note. I saw her there again, standing at the end of the hallway. Long black hair, beautiful as ever, streaked with moonlight, eyes dark pools in her porcelain face. She wore her favorite red dress like a crimson sunset, like a streak of blood in the waning light. Laura, of course you couldn't be dead. I will say this, I think Ruvik is a little bit weirdly close to his sister. I don't know if it's fair to say in the actual text of the game he's completely in love with her, but it they definitely allude to it a bit. But I don't know for a fact that that's true. And I am not letting that one get the drop on me either. Now, can I succeed at this trap? That is an excellent question. The answer is probably not. And you'll probably get to see why. You can put the reticle right on what you need to shoot here. And still miss. <laughs> Excuse me, Bomb, I was talking. I have my uh, mind so focused on success succeeding at this trap that I'm just, like, walking into bombs now. All right, here we go. Uh, okay. Let's just go ahead and try it. And we are back at that checkpoint, so I'll see you back at the trap. All right, let's try it again. Shit. Okay, that time we hit it. I definitely feel like there are a lot of times where you have that center dot right on it, and you just fail anyway. Now, we definitely want to grab our map tile here. Um, that's going to be number two, and there's only one more map tile left in the chapter, so that is good. Some toilet gel, you gotta love that. And which way do I want to go? Alright, we'll, we'll just go this way. And there's our key, definitely don't want to miss that. And that should be number four. And there should only be one more key left as well. I sincerely hope I didn't miss one because I really don't want to do this over. <laughs> it's just no fun at all. And if we crawl through this fireplace, we're going to find our last switch that we need to pull, so to speak. I guess our last brain to impale, I should say. All right, let's do it. Huh. 
Subject number 12. Test 71B. Electrode placement A2. Stimulation of amygdala, seat of emotion and memory allocation. The fear center of the brain. Subject feels as I do. This vessel is far too weak to withstand the psychological weight I myself bear daily. All right, and so for this one, we're going to need to do a uh, fear, which is going to be on the right side there. Right about here, I'd say. And that one worked, so all three of our little puzzle things are done. And that feels good, because I really don't want to just get killed and have to do stuff over again. Oh, Father. If you only knew how satisfying that look on your face is, did you actually think? If you locked me away, I would just cease to exist. Out of sight, out of mind. You did. You did. Didn't you? Oh, you were never out of my mind. I hope you're proud of yourselves. <sighs> yep, he murdered his parents in cold blood. And that is the person who is in control of this reality we are in. That does not bode well for us. And this is the way I want to go, over here. This person is helpfully pointing the way. burn you? Something tells me I should. <laughs> Maximum frequency stimulation of cortical regions has proven less than effective. The subjects scream, but they die much too quickly. Tailored settings achieve better results. The only question that remains is which regions to focus on. Fear, hope, and consent, trust, envy. Three of these are pivotal, but which will open the way? And so that's a little bit. Oh man, come on! <laughs> We're like certainly gonna die. Oh. Uh... Well, assuming I survive this. Uh, that's a little taste of him going through the experiments that we just kind of went through ourselves. And that all kind of feeds into the idea that we're sort of sharing a mind with him. Oh, thank God it's over. And now I have to just jog back to where I was. I really didn't think I was going to get another Rubik spawn. Oh, he's got a shotgun. Ugh. Oh. <laughs> that was just a desperation shot. Oh, my God. He really generously did not fire at me. He had me point blank for quite some time there, and a lot of times they'll just shoot you right away. But the, uh, the real bad part of this chapter is actually pretty much finally over. About fucking time. 
my thoughts exactly. Oh, is there another shotgun guy? Thought maybe I could swing around him. That one was a little less generous. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna run away from him. I'm not gonna leave him behind. Alright. Now, before I head out, I'm just gonna do a quick sweep and make sure that I got all the keys, because you die so often that sometimes you forget what you've picked up and what you haven't, so I'm just gonna double check and make sure that we're on track with our keys, and I'll see you right back here. Alright, I am satisfied that we've got everything that we're looking for, so let's get a move on. cure for what I'm going to do to you. Peel pristine skin. Thoughts from the mind. Rovik? <laughs> and he has been psychotic for a long time. <laughs> Let's make sure I can't actually pick that up. I can. Nice. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> and what will we find following these floating blood particles. That's right, it's a gigantic blood monster. Now, fortunately, this thing is pretty slow, so we've just got to run away from it. And we keep ending up in this same room. Now, we gotta get a move on because these things are gonna be coming down right behind us right away. And it's not easy to pick everything up in here. If you trip one of these, the ceiling comes down on you and you die. And if you're too slow, you die. Fortunately, it's not too tricky to navigate. The main mistake you could make is getting up too soon. What is up with these mannequins? And now we're going to end up in this blood, uh, in this maze with this blood thing chasing us. And you got to be quick. hurts you if it gets too close. But we've got to find a way out of here. We 
we made it through the maze. And where are we? You guessed it, back in that same room. <laughs> But let's just review a little bit about what we know for right now. We know that Ruvik has a pretty deep obsession with his sister. He very he he likes her a lot. Let's just put it that way. And there was a fire in the town and Ruvik went missing. His sister ended up in a coma and both his parents wound up dead because he murdered them. But we're going to find out a little bit more about that right now. Now, before we head out, we do want to grab this map fragment on the table. That's the last one in the chapter. So just one more key to find. And let's keep going and find out some more about uh, Ruben's past. Was I led here? Why indeed? <laughs> now, before we head inside, we're going to want to check around the sides. <laughs> oh, if I could just pick those up. That's all I can carry, but that's fine with me. All right, let's head on in. Laura, where are you? <laughs> I know you're in here. I can hear you breathing. <laughs> Rich bastards. Think they can buy up all our land? They need to be shown who really owns these parts. <laughs> hey, I think there's kids in there. <laughs> I didn't hear anything. <laughs> what the? Somebody open the door! Ruben! Ruben! You have to climb! <laughs> Shit. I better get out of here. There. And that's right, the townspeople burned down the barn with them inside, and that's how Ruvik uh, got those scars on his face. And that also explains why Laura hates fire so much. Laura, of course, is the uh, sort of many-armed creature that chases us around. So it all kind of hangs together really nicely, and now... None of this is any excuse for what Ruben became when he became Ruvik. But it does make you feel a little bit sorry for him. In a way. He's... I guess... So that's not, that's not how I want to put that at all. You don't feel sorry for him, but he is a tragic character. His life was certainly marred by tragedy, and it changed him. And not for the better. Now, before we head towards that window, we do want to burn these. This is going to be our last goddess statue. 
right behind these. Some of this stuff, I'm just like, how do people find this stuff? I have no idea. Unless you were burning every single thing in the game, I have no idea how you'd ever find that. And let's not miss this green gel over here. And let's get out of this burning barn. That's right, the blood particle monster is not done with us. And I love the way he yanks you from, you know, almost escaping right back down to the bottom. And basically all we've got to do is avoid him and kill these haunted that he spawns. So this boss is not too tough. Really, you're just kind of staying moving and killing a few basic haunted. Should really not be a big deal. And that's the story of Reuben and Laura. Beatrice, please. You must eat. You've got to keep your strength up. My children. I want... Beatrice, we have been through this. Oh, man. Despite how much I hate this chapter, I really do like the story stuff in it. Um, I think it's a very interesting thing to make Ruvik not uh, sympathetic. But giving him a tragic backstory makes his motivations more comprehensible. I don't like villains that are just evil. He has a reason for the evil things that he does. Ooh, and that's the end of maybe my least favorite chapter, but we have another pretty bad one coming up next, but I'm very glad it's done. I hope you had fun watching, and this is all the time I've got for today, so thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.